just want to welcome you all to the second annual staff forum today. I want to especially thank President Holland for giving me the opportunity to uh, take a few minutes and talk about PACE. I'm the, my name's Alexis Palmer, and I am the president of the Professional Association of Campus Employees. And so I'm here to just give you a, a quick overview of PACE and then also to introduce the president. But before I get started, I just want to make you all aware on your tables are a couple brochures that the president will be referring to. One is a university project, and there is a t-shirt for all of you to wear um, regarding the university project. In the back of the room, after the president is done speaking, you can go and receive a free t-shirt, and Luke Peterson is back there, and he'll give you one of those. But let me give you a little information about PACE. The major purpose of this organization is to advocate for UVU exempt and non-exempt staff and their concerns through unified voice to the administration in all areas that involve PACE members. Examples of this might include policies and procedures that are happening here on campus, benefits and compensation, and summer university, just to name a few. We also sponsor programs and activities to promote employee recognition, professional development, and social interaction. Some of these programs all are the Wolverine Sighting Award, or um, another one that we have is our Staff Education Award, and Staff Development Fund that we give out as well. So those are just a few. But in order to make this all happen, we actually have elected positions um, from your colleagues who make up the PACE board, and they are really the ones who make all of this happen. And so I'd like to introduce them today. So first, if I can have um, my executive board stand up, and you don't need to applaud, we'll wait till the very end. Um, my president-elect is Brett McKechnie, Vice President Joel Hurd, and our secretary and treasurer, Drew Huffaker. And we also have an administrative liaison, Mike Francis. We also have our senators, so if I can have all of our senators stand up, they represent each division here at UVU, and they are who you're going to talk to if you have a concern or issue, an idea, please talk to one of these individuals and they can bring that forward. All their information is also on the website. Thank you, senators. And I'd also like our committee chairs to stand as well. Again, they are the ones that really enhance working here at UVU by providing great programs and experiences for all of us. Thank you, committee chairs. We meet on the third Tuesday of every month, and our meetings and agendas are posted on our website, and you're more than welcome to attend. All those meetings are open, and our first meeting will be in September. And I just want to um, emphasize how important it is for you to get involved with this organization and how supportive our administration is of a PACE. I want to thank President Holland for his support of PACE. And in fact, through PBA, we've received additional funding for our staff education fund. So for students who are receiving, um, furthering their education, they can apply for additional funds for that. And they also gave us some funds this year to help our holiday social uh, that we'll be able to sponsor um, uh, this year that we haven't been able to sponsor in the past because of, of funding. I also want to thank President Holland for launching this staff forum. This is the second time we've done this, and this is the first president that has really wanted to take the time to address our staff and share the vision that he has for this upcoming year. And I don't know if you can feel the excitement that's happening in the air right now as the students are coming back, um, but I'm very appreciative, President Holland, for taking um, the opportunity to, to be here today and to talk to us. And I also want to have a special thank you to all of you for serving our UVU students. Uh, we work all year long. Sometimes people wonder, oh, what did you do for the summer? I was here working all summer. And that's what you are all doing to serve our students. And that's why our students are coming here. And so I just want to express my appreciation to all of you. And so President Holland, I will turn the time over to you. Good morning, everybody. How was breakfast? <laughs> Sounds like it was okay. <laughs> uh, well, we're uh, uh, really delighted to see all of you this morning. This is uh, an important thing uh, for us to do. Some have noted that I wasn't eating breakfast. Uh, it's uh, not, uh, you know, Ramadan's over. It's not a religious thing. Um, it's uh, it's actually has to do with parental shame. Uh, uh, I had a great summer, uh, took uh, for the first time since I've been here a little extended vacation time. My parents 
celebrated their 50th wedding anniversary, and so for 10 years they've been planning uh, not a big reception or a party, but they wanted to take their kids and spouses to Israel for a week, and so we did that, and it was a fantastic experience, and visiting uh, Bet Lehi, among other things. Bet Lehi is a place when you see the next UVU magazine. It's this one of the leading archaeological sites in Israel, and our UVU students and faculty are helping recording that and moving that uh, archaeological dig along. So that was a very great moment of UVU pride for me, even as I'm on the other side of the world. And uh, then we made a few stops through uh, Europe on the way home and uh, must have been having a pretty good time, or at least I was, uh, because as we were standing in the Paris airport uh, after this great family moment, uh, high point of... uh, parental and sibling love and enjoyment, Uh, my dad just out of the blue said, yeah, when we go home, Matt and I are going on a diet. (laughs) So uh, anyway, my siblings looked at me like, way to take the hits, big boy. (laughs) Uh, So I know some of you know and love and admire my parents, but it's not always a bed of roses, I can tell you that. So I will speak more about that in another setting. Anyway, uh, I want to thank Alexis. She does a fantastic uh, job in both her day job uh, and uh, and in running Pace. And uh, I want to really appreciate her. She's a wonderful advocate for the staff. Uh, She comes and sits in our weekly Presence Council meetings. And I just want you to know that your voice is is heard and well represented by her. When, When issues come up, she is quick and uh, articulate and wise in suggesting how things might be seen from the staff position. And so PACE is a really vital organization that way, and she does a great job, and I I think uh, you should all be aware of that. And so I'd like to ask for a round of applause from you for uh, Alexis and her leadership. Uh, I did appreciate what she uh, said about this event. It really is true. Uh, you know, for, there's been a long tradition on this campus of doing a faculty convocation. Uh, that's, a, that's been an important moment, certainly been an important moment for me to spend time with the faculty and talk about where we're headed and <clears throat> what we're doing, what our mission is, and apply that specifically to the faculty role. Uh, but it was uh, after going through that uh, the first year, it was my immediate sense that we needed some equivalent of that with the staff. Uh, you folks are just as vital to what is needed to make this operation work. And uh, so I wanted to have a chance to just meet with you and talk about what my priorities are, uh, maybe do some uh, teaching and, and uh, coaching about our mission and why it matters and also say some words about uh, staff work and contribution. Now, I'll say up front that uh, some of this may not seem immediately relevant to your job. Uh, That's, uh, I I, I guess I just want to point out to say, I hope that by the end you will see that it is. Uh, Even if you're not immediately, feel like you're immediately connected to some component of the educational project, Everybody in this room plays a role that supports that and makes that happen. And I think everybody, therefore, should know and have a sense for what we value here, what we're trying to accomplish, and and to feel and become part of it. Because there are lots of things that can be done in in unexpected and informal ways that will move our institution forward. So I'm grateful to do that. I'll try to wrap up by uh, 8.50 because I've got to hurry and go pay my tuition. Some of you laughed more than others at that. I know I'm creating huge problems this morning for our friends in One Stop. I thank you for your patience. Uh, uh, Next year, we'll we'll do it a little differently. I think things will be different. Uh, But uh, we we will try to get out uh, early, or at least by 8.50, so that you can get back to the onslaught that awaits, I'm sure. Uh, And we'll ask you to do that with a smile, which I'm sure you will. Uh, I'll say more about that later for all of us. Okay, Um, well, first of all, I I thought you might have some interest in hearing what my priorities are for the coming year. And I want to stress up front, 
Th these are not the only things that we will do on campus. These are not the only things I will be involved in on campus. Uh, this is really just the very treetops, if you will, of a very robust planning process that started back in May and has just kind of culminated in the last week or two. And it's involved each of the cabinet officers and, uh, and their work. And I'm joined this morning by my cabinet. Can I have the cabinet stand up? Uh, I think we're, we're all here in various uh, uh, forms. So uh, round of applause for... For, the, for their great work. Uh, a little bit later, I'm going to read you portions of a little love note I sent them this summer. Uh, so uh, they do an extraordinary job, and uh, we're really lucky to have them, along with yourselves, in, in pursuing this educational project. In any case, uh, we, we met uh, off-site as a cabinet. We met with our uh, executive leadership council. We asked ourselves some questions about uh, what are we? What are our? What are we stewing about these days? And what? What are? And kind of, if we were starting from scratch, blue sky. What would we do if we could do it? And what is our mission? And how do we close the gap that always exists for any institution between what we aspire to be and what we are? And uh, after thinking through those questions, each division went through a priority setting uh, exercise. I went through it. I'm gonna. We don't have time to go through all those, so I'm just gonna share you mine. Uh, but these are just sort of my top priorities. I have lots of other things I'll still be doing. Each vice president and a cabinet officer has priorities for their division. And uh, I hope that's uh, cascading uh, through the university and that uh, you're all moving forward this year with a concrete set of plans about what we can try to accomplish together. So in terms of uh, my priorities, uh, number one, Go get the resources, expand the support, and in new key areas. Now, by new key areas, I mean this is an interesting year for higher education. We have a new commissioner of education. We have new leadership at the Board of Regents. We're going to have some legislative change, including on the Higher Ed Appropriations Committee. And so I see one of my big jobs uh, starting right now uh, as we get back into the school year is to get with these leaders. I'm, I'm going to leave here and go up to a meeting in Salt Lake with the new commissioner and, and, uh, and some of the new regents to start to talk about these issues. And so this is a top priority for me. And amongst those resource needs we have is compensation. I think you know that was a big fight for me last year. Uh, I wish we could have gotten more. I was glad we got something when we were told we would get nothing. It will continue to be a priority for me. We've, you've got to have more support that way. I see that. I feel that. I want to do everything I can uh, on your behalf for that. We desperately need a classroom building. We are, uh, even with all of the great construction on campus, which we can literally feel here as we eat, uh, we need more space. And we're doing lots of other things to do distance education and and weekend and evening scheduling, but we just need more bricks and mortar. We got some design money for a classroom. We're working on designing that, uh, but we still have, we can't take our eye off that ball. We have to go secure the full amount of funding for that building, so that becomes uh, a key objective for us. And then equity funding. In other words, treating UVU more like other institutions in terms of their base funding, reasons, historical reasons, plausible reasons why we've gotten out of kilter, but we need to address that. We had our first success with that last year. We got some equity money. I put the legislators and others on alert. That was just a start. We have to be given more. And so those will be the, the primary themes of, of what I'm uh, looking at uh, promoting. Uh, we can't rely entirely on public funding. We have to become a better and better fundraising school. We've made great strides with that uh, over the last couple of years. I'm grateful for Mark Archambault and, and uh, his team of Jane and Joel and, and the field officers and others who are working with them uh, to be more aggressive and more professionalized and uh, committed to best practices. And we're starting to see some really great successes with that, and we need to build on that. And I want to personally invest in that and have committed, without going into all the details of the things I'll be working on, that I'll be spending roughly 20% of my time going out and trying to get people to see the great things that are going on here and why they should invest in UVU. Uh, 
our continued implementation of our unique educational mission and our strategic plan for growth. Uh, we continue to, to do that. I'll say more about some of the key elements of that on implementation that you all have been working so hard on and I'm so appreciative of. Uh, there are other things that we've got to do, including this issue of satellite campuses, as we can start to see with, um, uh, with the interchange and everything that's going on. Even though we still have a little bit more room on this campus, it's the, the ability to park and navigate is getting increasingly difficult. We've got to look uh, to satellite campuses as part of our future and should begin thinking now about what that would mean. I say that absolutely without any preset ideas about what's, what should go where and how it should be done, but we'll have a collaborative process for thinking about that and moving that forward. Um, We've, uh, we've put a lot of emphasis on the fundraising front on what I would call inclusive things. We had a great scholarship drive last year, uh, bringing in four million new dollars worth of scholarship monies uh, and, and for students beyond the kind of presidential scholars, for students uh, more need-based scholarships. We'll continue to do that. I'm not saying we're away from that. I uh, don't want to steal uh, the uh, development office's thunder, but we're, we, obviously we're not going to be able to duplicate four million. That was never our goal, but we're going to be substantially higher than where we've been uh, on average in years past. So uh, it's all now time to, I think, start the focus on doing some fundraising to advance academic excellence. What do we need to do to support uh, the instrumentation, the learning environment, uh, the things that are critical to move forward uh, university uh, academic elements that way. We live in one of the most unique uh, business areas in the nation. I think it's the second most dynamic high-tech corridor uh, in the nation, uh, uh, second only to Silicon Valley. And we need to take advantage of that. Uh, there, there's money there, there are ideas there, there are engaged learning opportunities for our students there, and so I want to use the leverage of the President's office to meet with CEOs and to get their input and to forge connections for our university that I think will have long-term uh, impact. Uh, focus on leadership development. Uh, it's my sense that uh, we, the only way we move forward together is through leadership across the board. I'm trying to do my best job as a leader, imperfect as it is, but we need leadership uh, all across the board and we need to do more to help people emerge as leaders. I'm especially uh, 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 concerned and interested and in looking to m make progress on what we can do for leadership opportunities for underrepresented uh, populations minorities and women and others who uh, want to have and need to have uh, the opportunity and ability to develop along these lines, we will be spending some time thinking about uh, that. Uh, part of the reason I didn't eat this morning is also because I was sitting there talking with Mike Jacobson uh, about an athletic conference and where we stand. And I, I wish I had more to report on that right now. It continues to be a priority for me. Uh, I'm making calls. I'm making flights. I'm doing everything I know how to do to see if we can get in a more regionally stable uh, conference with uh, automatic bids for NCAA tournaments and different things like that. That will continue to be something important. Foster a culture of emergency preparedness. This was a, this was a goal we had last year, uh, candidly in a spirit of self-assessment. I don't think we did so well on that, uh, but uh, we're going to do better this year and we've already started off by hiring a dynamic new uh, safety officer, a woman who comes with 27 years of experience from uh, a large hospital uh, uh, complex, and uh, we'll look forward to introducing her to you later and doing some training and coordinating some things as a campus. This is an area where we really do need your leadership, your active support, and so I'm going to continue to message on this and try to provide the opportunities we need to learn how to protect our students, how to protect our colleagues and ourselves in this sadly and increasingly dangerous world that we live in, and, and particularly sadly so on university campuses. We just have to be on our guard, whether it's natural disaster or, or human malice. There are just too many things that are affecting too many people in our sister institutions, and we need to be on our guard for that. So those are, those are my priorities for the year. Again, I look forward to working on them with you and for you, as I also look forward to seeing 
the cabinet officers and each of you and your different elements uh, working on those things that are go going to most immediately move forward our mission. Now, let me say something about uh, our mission. Again, this for me is uh, sort of a teaching moment, if you will. We, we talk a lot about the language, serious, engaged, inclusive, student success. Uh, I'd like to uh, form something of a tradition to take a, at least a minute or two each time we do this to say something about that mission. What, why, what does it mean? Why is it important? So um, this booklet that you've all been given, if you uh, flip, flip it open, uh, you'll see that uh, uh, graphic uh, right there in the middle uh, with, the, with the great photos kind of capturing, again, what's at the heart of that graphic? Students and student success. I, you're just going to hear me say that over and over again. That's the central aim and focus of what we do. It's, it's so easy to get distracted with a lot of other things that are important and good, but at the end of the day, what we're really about is student success. And you can open it further if you want to and see the other things that uh, we, we think about our core themes. Uh, and uh, behind these core themes and objectives, we have a whole set of indicators, how are we gonna measure ourselves against progress, but these are the things we wanna stay focused on as a, as a campus. What I'd like to do for the next few minutes, though, is focus just on that central thing, student success. And again, recognize that some of you may not feel like, well, I, I have a job where I don't deal immediately with students. You still need to know why this is so central and need to see why what you do matters and find ways to see the connections and to believe in what we're doing. If so, I think we'll be that much better an institution. So, uh, student success taken right from our core themes, as you can see uh, there in the pamphlet, as well as up here on the sc screen. We've, uh, these are uh, definitions that have been worked out through a broad university planning process. We're talking about supporting students and achieving not just their educational goals, although those goals are front and center, but also professional and personal goals. How are we trying to help the student in the most holistic way possible? You see some of the core objectives that follow from those core themes. And again, if you dig into it and look on the website, you can see that behind the objectives, we have core indicators. What are the specific things we're gonna be measuring and working on to try to promote student success? Well, with that in mind, uh, I do want to uh, take a minute and just say a little more extended thing about student success broadly. For faculty convocation, we're bringing in a special guest speaker. Sorry, you folks are stuck with me. Uh, but Vincent Tinto is a really an internationally renowned scholar about student success and retention. And we're bringing him in to speak to the faculty about things that they can do with their pedagogies to help keep students and help them move towards uh, graduation. You can see with this quote here, if you want to read that uh, while I'm speaking, that uh, his point is that universities should just try to control and worry about the things they can control and should worry about. In other words, we can't worry so much about student uh, aptitude, preparation. Those are not really things that we can do a lot about in our situation. What we can do and what still makes a difference almost regardless of how the students come to us is create the right climate, the right set of conditions that maximize the chances for student learning, student growth, and student opportunity. And he boils it down to a handful of things that every campus, if they're serious about student success, should demonstrate. A sense of commitment, expectations, support, involvement, and learning. I'll say just a word about each of those as a way to emphasize this and also show you some of the great progress we've made this last year and maybe a little bit about where we're going. Uh, commitment. We, uh, you should know that uh, it, it doesn't drive every decision, but the PBA process, especially as things come up into the cabinet, are often and primarily seen through this lens about, is this going to enhance student learning? Uh, just to give you a flavor for this, I'm gonna read you a bit later uh, passages from a, um, uh, a letter I wrote to the uh, cabinet. And uh, in one part, I, I told them, when you come to me, as the president with an issue or a problem. Uh, you should know by now, and they, they do know, I was just kind of affirming this for us. The first question I'm going to ask is, 
Is it the thing to do to best advance a rigorous quality student learning experience? That for me is putting our money where our mouth is. Are we putting our time, our resources, and our energies in a way that promote and enhance that student learning experience? That has to always be our first consideration. And so you should know that's our mindset as we go into the PBA process. It was our mindset with my first, if you will, mini fundraising campaign. It was a scholarship campaign. How do we, what do we do that can enhance and promote students and their experience here at the university? Expectations. Uh, Tinto makes the point that students don't rise to low expectations. We've been going through a very uh, energetic process, a, a frankly n uh, not an easy process, to raise the level of expectations for UVU students while still retaining our great open admissions culture and character and, and point of access for students who, who need it most. The way we've done that is through structured enrollment. I'm not going to go into the details of that again. I've talked about that quite a lot. But uh, I'm very grateful for all of the effort that's gone into that, along with things like the earlier admissions deadline uh, and the earlier purge. Uh, which we're working on right now. Tuition payment deadline is today. This is going to keep more seats available for students who are more serious and ready to start uh, the semester. Uh, one of the audiences that has embraced this the most have been our partners in the K-16 through Alliance, our principals and superintendents who say, we love it that UVU is saying we need higher standards. It gives them a position to go back to say to their faculty and their operations, we have to get our students better prepared. Just uh, again by way of note, here are all of the departments. I, I think this is for everybody. If I've left someone off, you'll, you please forgive me. But these are all of the departments affected by these new enrollment policies. And it's just breathtaking to me when I, I mean, I had a general sense, but when I asked this to be pulled together, it just, it just kind of hit me between the eyes of just how sweeping this policy change has been. And so I, I want to personally thank everyone in these areas who's who have worked so hard, in some areas so really exceptionally hard with extra hours and extra effort to make that work. We're not done with it yet. I ask for continued patience and energy. I think this is going to be a transformative moment for the university. It's certainly being exceptionally well received out in the community by citizens, legislators, donors. Everybody immediately says you're on the right path to be doing this. So I thank you. I ask for your continued effort on that. And a round of applause for everybody who's uh, participating. In this. Support. Uh, are we doing the things that can support uh, a great learning environment? Uh, we've already talked about the scholarship drive. That was key to it. Uh, we've hired a number of new uh, faculty and staff to support our unique educational mission, extra advisors, extra support staff, extra faculty for developmental education, for helping students get ready to the point that they can function effectively in a university setting. Um, have some uh, exciting news if you've, uh, if you've missed it about the We Care Center. This is a favorite little part of campus for me as I see some of our students who struggle the most, uh, often single parents, uh, often female single parents who otherwise just could not finish a degree if it weren't for the We Care Center. It's a great little operation, but it is little. And it is uh, old, and we need to do more and we need to do better by these kids and especially by these students who need these opportunities. So we've had ambitious plans to build a new We Care Center near the existing We Care Center. And uh, we've been at work as that's been a major push as a fundraising initiative this year. And uh, I'm uh, very pleased to announce that, uh, if, again, it's, it's already been announced, but we received a million dollar gift from Barbara Barrington Jones, which gets us a considerable ways there. We're having other fundraising successes, and we will do this. We will raise all of the money necessary to do this so we don't have to go to the state and have that take precedence over a classroom building or anything. We will just go out and find the private resources to do this so that we can take care of more, more kids and more students who need this service so that they can complete their degree. That's, uh, thank you, thank you.
I appreciate that and, and accept that uh, not so much as praise, but as your shared commitment. But th th this is an important thing for us to be doing to give support, to create that right environment for students and their learning opportunities. Um, involvement. We are asking everybody to be involved. Uh, our student success and retention uh, efforts, uh, led by Michelle Kearns and a lot of other people who are involved, is really having a marvelous impact on this campus. And you, I think, uh, know, will recognize this from last year. Uh, I choose to retain. We're asking everybody, wh whatever part of the campus you're on, whether you see yourself as even remotely connected to students or not, to, to be committed to this uh, because at some point all of you do uh, uh, have connections with students and so your little messages about staying in school and completing degrees and taking it seriously we want everybody on campus part, part of that culture and rhetoric and so we appreciate that. Very excited about the student life and wellness building. Uh, I'll say more about that in just a minute. Here are all the different initiatives that we've got going on campus with retention. Uh, so uh, we, we have involvement across this campus. I applaud that. I want to continue to see that. Uh, uh, assuming none of us die by a falling crane this morning, uh, we will continue to make progress on the Student Life and Wellness Building. This is such an exciting project for me. I'm so grateful for Corey and Bob and our folks in Student Affairs who have who have had a passion and a vision for this for a long time and have helped us, the rest of us, see the potential of it. And uh, this will give a new reason for students to stay on campus, not just kind of dash in and take a class and dash off, but the range of things that will be able to help them physically, mentally, uh, with their, as we say, body, mind, and, and spirit. Uh, there are things in this building that will, will benefit the whole person, if you will, for students and will really help uh, give that uh, feeling of involvement and support. Uh, and uh, let me just say, uh, we're on track to finish it uh, by December. It will be the university's big Christmas gift. Uh, uh, meanwhile, we're all going to have to be patient. Okay, this is going to be an interesting year. Could we all just please accept it? Parking's going to stink. Uh, Traffic flow is going to stink. Getting meetings started is going to be tough as visitors come to campus. But we're paying the price now so that we can have this magnificent new structure and a new parking structure. It will all be to a good end. So if we can all just have a good uh, spirit and attitude about that, uh, it will well be worth it. And so I, I ask for your uh, indulgence as we get through some of the pains uh, of this and other construction projects uh, around campus. Uh, learning, uh, again, focus on that learning environment. Uh, we, we're continuing a robust uh, commitment to engage learning as our chosen pedagogy students are loving that. They're turning more and more to it. Our faculty are embracing it more and more. Uh, Dr. Birch is uh, really, uh, with his component within academic affairs, promoting this for faculty development. So that will continue to be a focus. We've got a a uh, new university project for engaged learning that's involving the whole campus and that the community is so appreciative of. If we can't help third graders get on task uh, and on level for reading and numeracy, we inherit those problems, society inherits those problems, and we've got a lot to offer to address that issue. And I can tell you the community could not be more appreciative of our involvement with this and bringing those resources to bear. I'm trying to lead by example. I still send out my yearly letter to all incoming freshmen, inviting them to my home for a couple of nights to read a couple of books. Uh, this year we're reading The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind and uh, an old classic. Uh, that's kind of my, you know, my usual approach is one contemporary piece and one classic piece. And Cato, this was a 17th, uh, 18th century play that was about the Roman Republic that was a great inspiration to George Washington, the American Revolution. So uh, you're welcome to, uh, to read these books and join with us. We'll have on-campus experiences. Uh, Cato will be performed. Uh, the, the central hero of, of The Boy Who Harnessed the Wind will be coming to speak on campus. So join us. Read these books. Be part of the, be part of the intellectual learning environment. You're absolutely welcome and encouraged to do that. And we're so thrilled to be able to enter the new uh, science building this year and what it will mean for us and our learning. So. Uh, that's, uh, that's what I want to say about student success. A lot more that could be said. 
We're doing great things. We need to do more great things. And we need all of us to be committed to this, uh, to this central core mission. Now, as I uh, wrap up, I want to say something about excellence. Uh, that's an element, if you will, of one of our other themes about being a serious university. I've stressed again and again, when we talk about being a serious university, that is not just an academic thing. We talk about academic and professional excellence. It sweeps across the board, and we must have excellence in every sector of the institution. And so, uh, in that spirit, let me uh, just read a, a few passages from a letter I wrote to the cabinet. Uh, I took some time off just to uh, thank them. Uh, they're an extraordinary group to work with. I appreciate them. I appreciate what they do for me. I appreciate what they do for you. Uh, and I wanted to take a minute to tell them that. Uh, I also wanted to affirm uh, how I feel about the institution because of them. So here's a passage. There is so much to feel proud about when it comes to UVU. All of you have been at this longer than I have and should take great satisfaction in what this institution has become because of your leadership. What you've done for the university in general, and your area in particular, is remarkable. When anyone really stops to look at this school across the board, from the beauty of the grounds to the power of the classroom, they cannot help but be moved by the combination of excellence and efficiency that prevails. I believe that with all of my heart, and it's not just a cabinet uh, manifestation, it's, it's, manif it's a manifestation of your work, your contribution, in fact, e and even more so than what I do and what the cabinet does. Uh, you are the ones that carry this out. You're the ones that make the ground sparkle and the, and the, the walls uh, look so great. I was joking with our friends on the painting crew about, uh, you know, that, uh, it's like the San Francisco Bridge. You get to the end, you got to go back and start over again. And uh, they made the point, we're not sure we ever get to the end. Uh, uh, they are asked to do so much. I love those guys. I'm so proud of them and so appreciative of, uh, of what they do. And they've done it in little nooks and corners of my house on campus and the sweeping uh, infrastructure of the main campus. And, uh, and that's just emblematic of a lot of stuff that's happening all over this campus that, that makes a great difference. Now, having said all of that, I did want to take this opportunity with the cabinet and with you to make the following point. It is because of our successes as an institution, not in spite of them, that we must push as hard as ever in the months and years ahead to ratchet up the capacity and quality of this institution. In an earlier professional life form, I used to deal with what I called successful company syndrome. Many businesses that begin lean, hungry, innovative, achieve great success, but then, over time, begin to slacken or get stuck in original practices because the money kept coming in anyway, at least for a while. More often than not, such firms eventually fail or hit a crisis point and only survive by painful reinvention. As something of a historian by personal interest and professional training, it is always my instinct to honor and learn from the past but we must not allow ourselves and the dynamic needs of UVU to be held back by an over-reliance on what we have previously done, even when that previous approach has been highly successful. In other words, we have to move forward. We have to keep pushing ourselves to be our very best and not just rest on what we've done in the past. Now, I want to be careful. I'm not asking for some much more uh, energetic uh, effort from, from some of you. I know some of you are working all out. You're fully tapped. Uh, I'm not asking for some dramatic sea change in the direction of the university. We're on the right path. I'm convinced of it. Uh, but we just have to relentlessly ask ourselves, are we doing the very most that we can and the best that we can, including changing and adapting as needs be to meet the most pressing needs and highest priorities and values of this institution. I asked the cabinet to do a couple of things in response, including uh, taking more ownership. Less has to be done in my office. More has to be done in their offices. In turn, there are things that they will need to shed, that they've done historically, that, that their uh, staff uh, support will need to do, and that should cascade through the whole university. 
Uh, we've been a, a fairly centralized institution. We need to have a greater devolvement of power and responsibilities in many respects. And so I ask all of you to join us in that conversation about what can you do to step up and take more responsibility, more ownership, more initiative to address the problems that, uh, that, are, that are around you. Um, finally, I asked three questions, and I've read you part of this uh, uh, before, but I'll, I'll reiterate. With this new push forward, there are several questions I would have you ceaselessly ask yourself as you come forward with recommendations, solutions, and initiatives. So as, as we all increase our sense of ownership and initiative, how do, how do we do this with those that we report to? Keep these three questions in mind. Number one, is it the thing to do to best advance a rigorous quality student learning experience? Number two, does it sufficiently control costs, especially in the long term? We are the most efficient institution of higher learning in the state. It's the only way we survive. I'm, I'm actually very proud of that. Again, you see what a priority it is for me to go get additional resources, but we must continue to lead the way in terms of efficiencies in education. The world, I'm telling you, the world is increasingly looking to UVU and our model. The model that other schools are per pursuing is not sustainable. And so we have, this is one of our great competitive advantages. We have to continue to embrace that. Third, does it reflect an effort to do everything we can? Excuse me, does it reflect an effort to do everything we can do in reason and wisdom to respond to the hopes, wishes, questions, and concerns of all those we serve and with whom we par partner? I, I don't know how to say it any other way than that, but is that our predisposition to, to be responsive, to turn to people, to try to anticipate needs, to, quote, answer your phone? My staff has learned that the most nervous I get is if I ever call and I, it goes into voicemail. It doesn't, it doesn't happen anymore, and it rarely happened before, but that for me becomes emblematic of are we at our posts? And maybe it's not answering the phone, maybe it's the email, maybe it's, it's some other form of response, but are we there? in our positions, responding with a human face and a human voice to the things that we need to do. We've got to do that the very best that we can do and do it with cheer and optimism. When we're happy as a staff, when we're positive, our students are happy, our parents are happy, our constituents are, 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 are better. And so I ask you to join me in putting our best face forward and seeing the greatness of, of, this, uh, of this institution and to do it uh, at every level. I, I love the thought of, um, uh, of uh, Martin Luther King. I, you know, I have a dream too, and he had a dream. This is a little different dream than the, the racial equality dream, which I lo also love and, and share. But here's something that Martin Luther King said that for me speaks to, again, the need for excellence in every component of, of this institution. He comes from the position that every person has a kind of a calling, and I, I believe that. I believe uh, that's not necessarily a religious thing, uh, but that people are, are, are equipped and interested and have passions and interests to do different things. That's how we move forward as a, as a human organization. And as, and as long as we're doing it here and we need to be doing it here, it's vital and it's noble, whatever it is. Here's Martin Luther King. If a man is called to be a street sweeper, he should, he should sweep streets even as Michelangelo painted, or Beethoven composed music, or Shakespeare wrote poetry. He should, sweep, he should sweep streets so well that all the hosts of heaven and earth will pause to say, here lived a great street sweeper who did his job well. I hope that's what will be said of all of us in our individual roles wherever we are. And there are many reasons that I have this hope. And I'll just conclude with one note, and it's something you've heard me say before, and I'm going to say it again when we gather a very large collection of our most important university supporters and donors, but it's this. From a civic perspective, there is no greater cause in Utah Valley than Utah Valley University. If you think about it, whatever the issues are, if, you, if you're concerned about economic development, if you're concerned about democracy working and surviving, free, free government, if you're concerned about breaking cycles of poverty, if you're concerned about the environment, 
on and on and on. If those are your concerns, the single most important thing you can do is either invest in Utah Valley or work here and do your very best because that's the difference we are making. I can't imagine a more exciting and more important organization to be part of. And so join me wherever you are and whatever your position is this year to do your very best to carry out this mission that is not just transforming the lives of students, that is making all the difference in the world in this community that we love. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a great year.